If you keep up to date with what is going on in the rest of the world, you will be aware of these ratings. They were not produced by this government, but they were achieved by this government. Yeah. Notwithstanding such accolades, we cannot afford to be complacent, but must rather recognize the need for further improvement as well as constant vigilance to uphold our status as a global benchmark of good governance. To this effect, the Governance, Safety and Security thematic working groups held a series of meetings to deliberate on NDP 11 national priorities. Among the critical priorities they identified was the need to deal with emerging world trends of terrorism, human trafficking, and cybercrime. Additionally, money laundering, border security, internal and transnational organized crime, fraud, aviation security, and diamond security were some of the additional emerging security threats. To address these and other challenges which are emerging around the world, the government has, developed, has decided to develop a new national security strategy as a critical NDP 11 milestone. With regards to the rule of law, we remain committed to moder modernizing our courts, capacity to dispense timely as well as fair justice by leveraging on ICT, while further simplifying the rules of courts and reducing cost of litigation as well as the distance between litigants and court service centers. The development of a new sentencing policy encompassing alternatives to imprisonment is near completion and should also soon be brought to Parliament. The Legal Aid Project, which commenced in April of 2011, currently operates from the Attorney General's Chambers in Khabroni and Francistown. Plans are underway for the further delivery of services in Maun, Zabong, and Kasani. Legal aid services are available to citizens in respect of a wide variety of civil lawsuits. The demand for these services has steadily increased. As of May this year, almost 12,000 applications for legal aid had been received in Kharoni and Francestown. Madam Speaker, our courts through the various judicial reforms, have managed to reduce the waiting period for completion of cases. In this respect, the period under review has seen the introduction of new magistrates' courts in Bobonong, with three additional courts coming up this financial year in Nata, Shakawe, and Kan. In Kanye, the construction of a new courthouse will commence this year, while the Broadhurst Magistrates' Court is being expanded. The judiciary has also continued in its efforts to bring justice closer to people through the introduction of initiatives such as mobile traffic courts. Special courts for stock theft, maintenance, small claims and traffic have proved very effective. Resources permitting, it is our intention to roll out these courts to all districts. The Directorate of Public Prosecutions continues to discharge its mandate of prosecuting criminal cases in all common law courts of Botswana on behalf of the people of Botswana. In the year 2014-15, the directorate achieved 86% success rate for all the cases that had been tried in court. This high mark has been achieved despite such challenges as a shortage of skilled manpower. Madam Speaker, turning to the BDF, government continues to resource the Botswana Defense Force to enable it to be, a state of, to be in a state of readiness for any defense-related contemporary threats that may threaten the territorial integrity, sovereignty, and our national interests. With respect to online or cyber threats, the BDF is working jointly with other government departments to address issues of cyber security. With respect to the protection of our flora and fauna, the BDF will continue to collaborate with other governments and non-government stakeholders to minimize incidents of poaching. Madam Speaker, the Botswana Police Service continues its fight against crime. To this end, there is a continuous review and revision of legal frameworks, policing policies and procedures, resourcing and competencies to make them relevant to the changing public safety and protection challenges. As a result of such reviews, a number of laws were enacted, including the Counterterrorism Act, the Proceeds and Instruments of Crime Act, 
the Forsenic Procedures Act and Anti-Human Trafficking Act. The crime-fighting efforts of the police service rely heavily on tried and tested policing methods that include integration of visible policing, intelligence gathering, as well as a strong public engagement program to mobilize support for crime prevention initiatives. To this end, there has been a significant improvement over time in the incidence of violent and serious crimes. Rapid technological development has had a serious impact in policing the world over. Crimes involving digital computers, digital networks, and or materials stored in digital form continue to pose the greatest challenge to modern policing. The modernization of the Botswana Police Service has therefore become a priority for this government. To that end, Botswana Police Service is in the process in a drive to inculcate the use of technology in its business processes in order to improve effectiveness and efficiency in its service delivery. The police service is at an advanced stage in the process of introducing a safer city program in order to build capabilities for policing the city of Haworoni by means of closed circuit television technology. Such a program will address the efficiency of the response processes as well as speed up the investigation and detection of crime and it will be cascaded to other areas in need over time. Botswana has experienced a tremendous increase in the number of internet users. To this end, the cyber crime and computer for CNEX function is being established within the Botswana Police Service and it is being fully capacitated in terms of laboratories, storage and security facilities, including a highly skilled workforce. Government is therefore embarking on a large cyber investigation, cyber intelligence, and cyber for Scenix capacitating process for the police service. This will be supported by enhanced cyber crime and computer related acts, which the ministry is in the process of reviewing to bring it in line with developments in the cyber sphere. Madam Speaker, too many lives continue to be lost on the roads, especially of young and productive members of our society, largely due to human error, overspeeding, and drunken driving. However, the number of casualties has dropped from 24 per 100,000 in 2011 to 18 in 2014. Stringent measures have thus been put in place through, among others, the amendment of the Road Traffic Act. Madam Speaker, the Department of Prisons and Rehabilitation remains committed to providing effective rehabilitation of offenders and improving security of prison installations. While overcrowding <coughs> continues to be a problem in some of our maximum security prisons, it is pleasing to report that the majority of our prisons are now operating below their holding capacity. In June 2015, the average number of prisoners held in our prisons was 4,108 against an authorized holding capacity of 4,337 inmates. Turning to immigration, Madam Speaker, the Department and Citizenship of Immigration and Citizenship facilitates the movement of people in and out of the country. Given the importance of this function, we are working towards improving the Department's operational efficiency. In this regard, government is developing comprehensive systems which will in future be integrated, will, is developing, will be integrated with other systems for consistency, efficiency, and data integrity to facilitate online services, especially for critical functions such as visa, residence, and work permit applications. Government has further introduced strategies to reduce passport fraud and promote integrity of travel documents. This, amongst others, includes contributing to the Public Key Directory, which is a software that has been developed by the International Civil Aviation Organization to enhance security of travel documents and promote global interoperability. This will go a long way to help us fight fraud and forgery of passports together with cooperating countries. 
civil and national registration. Madam Speaker, the government remains committed to maintaining an up-to-date national register in accordance with the law. Currently, the national register for Oman stands at 1,559,187 for citizens who are 16 years and above and 604,628 for those under the age of 16 years as per the National Birth Register, bringing the total registered population to 2,163,815. This represents good progress and compares well with the Statistics Botswana population projections of 2,195,134 for the year 2015. Turning to labor, Madam Speaker, we continue to provide labor administration services to the nation with a view to promote industrial harmony. These services include labor inspections, trade dispute resolution, industrial relations, workers' compensation, employment services, as well as processing of work and residence permits. The Botswana Decent Work Country Program continues to implement an effort to promote rights at work, productivity, decent employment opportunities, social protection and dialogue. Implementation of the program has on review been extended from December 2015 to December 2017. The program will also facilitate the strengthening of social dialogue structures and processes in the country that are necessary for negotiations, consultations, and exchange of information among representatives of government, employers, and workers on issues of common interest. Turning to gender, Madam Speaker, this year marks 20 years after the 1995 Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, as well as the close of the Millennium Development Goals. I'm delighted to inform you that in the 20 years, Botswana has made significant progress on gender and development. Gender mainstreaming has been adopted as a key strategy for the achievement of gender equality. This approach recognizes that both men and women must be involved in the development process in order to effectively address the root cause of gender inequality for sustainable development. In order to accelerate participation of women in the mainstream economy, the Women's Economic Empowerment Program has been reviewed to include individual women, women groups, community projects, and cooperatives. Regarding the elimination and prevention of gender-based violence, we have adopted as government a national gender-based violence strategy 2014 to the year 2020, which outlines the multi-sectoral and multi-pronged approach. Turning to the Construction Industry Trust Fund, in line with the CITF strategic plan, the center has expanded the level of skills training during the financial year 2014-15. By introducing new skills, new training programs such as coded welding, rigging, roof glass thatching and dry walling partitioning in order to reduce dependency on external recruitment of semi-skilled artisans. On poverty eradication, Madam Speaker, our commitment to the eradication of abject poverty is reflected in our annual budget allocation of 160 million pula since 2012. The poverty eradication strategy is now in place to better guide the program's progress, while government has committed itself to removing the current project backlog by the end of this year. Progress has been made in the development of a locally produced Kalahad called the Kalahadi Sand Building Brock, with the first depot that will be make these bricks being established in Tsabon. We have designated four additional locations for the establishment of fully fleshed depots under the poverty eradication program. We therefore encourage Botswana to seize the business opportunities afforded by this technology. We have also identified land in Hansi, part of the central district, Francistown, and other areas where boreholes will be drilled and equipped for beneficiaries to engage in horticulture production, either as groups or cooperatives. Yes. Well, <clears throat> we are also embarking on grey water 
harvesting to address the issue of shortage of water for horticulture and fish farming. Let me reiterate here that poverty eradication is an ethical, social, and economic imperative of our government. Yes. We need every citizen and our development partners to join us in this war against poverty. The nation is assured that the rollout of the program is being fast-tracked to meet the set targets. Under social welfare, Madam Speaker, government is committed to continued provision of social protection services to different categories of people in order to have dignified and improved standards of living. These people who are mostly vulnerable to economic conditions are supported through our well-known programs. During the 2015-16 financial year, financial resources to the sum of 1.2 billion pula have been approved to finance these programs. As of June of this year, the government was supporting 32,860 destitute persons, 102,492 old age pensioners, 1,986 World War II veterans, 1,229 community home-based care patients, 32,803 orphans and vulnerable children. And from April this year, we also increased the cash allowances. We have also introduced a disability allowance during the current financial year, Madam Speaker. In this regard, payments started in August of this year. With those who have so far been identified as qualifying for allowance, which is paid to people with severe disabilities to help cushion their effects. The identification of additional qualified recipients is ongoing. We have also concluded the consultations on the review of the revised national policy on disabilities, which is to be presented to this session of Parliament. The policy will guide the implementation of disability services, including access to education, development of sport and sporting facilities, affirmative action, and the employment and general economic empowerment of people living with disability. Since the approval of the Affirmative Action Framework for Remote Area Communities, together with its 10-year implementation plan in 2014, the number of people employed in, effect in the sector in rural area communities has significantly increased. Madam Speaker, the budget for the Ipelering program was increased from 580 million pula, or thereabouts, in 2014-15 financial year to 635 million pula, partially due to the increase in the wage rate for beneficiaries. Funds allocated for this program also support various initiatives, such as crime prevention volunteers and special constables under the Botswana Police Service, wildlife volunteers, and for the 100 Monuments projects. Additional Ipelering projects include environmental cleanliness, minor construction, and maintenance of infrastructure. The monthly targeted beneficiaries are 64,191 people. Turning to housing, Madam Speaker, government continues to recognize access to adequate shelter as a basic need and a prerequisite for national social economic development. We shall therefore continue to ensure implementation of the national housing policy, as well as come up with new initiatives geared towards uplifting the status of housing for both public officers and the general public. In recent years, the provision of public housing has been outpaced by demand. To pick up the pace, and as part of the economic stimulus program, we have decided to accelerate the construction of 4,481 residents in various programs, which include the Shah Turnkey Project, public housing, installment purchase scheme housing, youth housing, home improvement, public officers housing initiative, and third party housing. Yes. We're also finalizing the public officers housing scheme guidelines. The low income housing program will continue to focus on three components of the sharp home improvement, turnkey development scheme, and integrated poverty alleviation and housing scheme. Government has increased the maximum income threshold to the low income housing program to 52,000 pula 
for both the Shah Home Improvement and Turkey Development Scheme. We have also further increased individual households' maximum loans entitlement from 45,000 pula to 60,000 pula for the Shah Home Improvement and from 60,000 pula to 90,000 pula for the turnkey development scheme effective from April this year. The government has funded a total of 4,017 projects for Shah Home Improvement. Of these, a total of 3,155 have been completed, whilst the other 162 are at various stages of construction. We have also funded 3,151 projects under the turnkey development scheme, of which 2,291 have been completed. The Integrated Poverty Alleviation and Housing Scheme and Destitute Housing Scheme are also assisting less privileged Botswana to break out of poverty. It is pleasing to note that the government's efforts to provide shelter for low-income and destitute people is being augmented by non-government institutions and individuals. In this context, I'm further pleased to report that over 500 residences have now been built through the Presidential Housing Appeal for the Needy, bringing us close to our target of 600 houses to have been built by the end of this year. Yeah. Here, I would like to take the opportunity to thank all those who have generously devoted their time, as well as their financial resources, to this initiative. Turning to health, thank you. Madam Speaker, government continues to strive to ensure that high quality health services are accessible and affordable for all in a sustainable manner. In this context, our health services are undergoing a transformation that focuses on the delivery of quality care that is financially sustainable, which incorporates a revitalization of primary health care as well as increased private sector participation, primary health care. As part of our ESP, we thus intend to upgrade 92 health facilities while continuing to upgrade our hospitals. In addition, we intend to prioritize the construction of 534 additional staff houses. <laughs> our commitment to access to health for all is further reflected in expansion of operation hours in clinics from 8 to 24 hours. Since 2014, nine more facilities have now expanded operating hours, bringing the total number to 48. Over the past five years, the health sector has performed relatively well on the health-related Millennium Development Goals through comprehensively funded programs and interventions. Botswana is on track to achieving its MDG4 target of reducing infant and under five mortality. This government continues to introduce immunization campaigns, such as the recent national rollout of human papilloma virus vaccine, HPV, for girls to prevent cervical cancer. Plans are also underway to introduce inactivated polio vaccine, which is safer and eliminates the risks from earlier vaccines. And this will be followed by the introduction of measles rubella vaccine in 2016. The child mortality rate has likewise been reduced from 70.